Welcome guys to episode 6 of Katawa Shouju. My name is Burning Oil, and we had a little bit of a, 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 a dead end last episode. Not an awful lot was happening. I think it's the calm before the storm, maybe, because the one before that we had like a potential feud happening, or potentially happening. It was pretty, pretty awkward. Um, just checking that I am actually recording, and uh, my phone should stop ticking so much. <laughs> anyway, let's get straight back into this, shall we? And remember, James, to load waylay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we just spoke to the doctor, and he was, like, telling us off for not doing exercise. Gotcha, right. Rin, um... Are you getting any medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? Comes out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality, that too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Rin's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Rin is just staring past my shoulder, quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. <laughs> Poor guy. Rin keeps looking at me for a while longer, and she neither says anything further, nor displays any kind of emotion I could discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. We leave the main building, and Rin leads us to onwards towards the dorm. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on a slightly elevated ground with a wall, and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go is probably the, o the, the only inconvenient design in this score. The entire wall, made of the same kind of bricks as the building itself, had been covered with some sort of a painting. Most of it is still mere sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the grey plastering that covers almost the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground, beside the wall. See? The left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. Then it was suddenly morning. <laughs> I know that feel. I have to work on it, but the guys from art class are helping with the negative spaces and base surfaces whenever, which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better, and it's faster too. She goes on a little tangent. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little, little of her arm or whatever, of it there, or whatever of it there actually is, to demonstrate even though I got the point already. The white cotton of her sleeve flaps round, and it makes me think it could look sad, <laughs> it think it could look sadder than it does. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder of the student bases, special properties has in the f past few days. What is that sentence? This girl doesn't. Notice my dreary feelings, of course, or the fact she lost me a moment a while ago already, and just keeps on blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's something I need to figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Why would the hope? Why would the hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then it has to dry, and then it has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she made some kind of statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project? You did this? Yes, yes. All of it? Yes. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorrectness. It's okay, you can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels that I'm way more sensitive than Rin is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See? I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. 
I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my, head, my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was using her feet to eat, I figured painting might not be a problem either. Neither is anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works pretty well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. Interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. Do you think it's flat? Eh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that flat. You know, flat, like some people are. No substance, no meat where there should be some. I know a few girls who... Okay, I get it, but I couldn't really tell. I'm not that good with art. I can't name many artists or artistic terms. So I don't really have anything to say. Rin shrugged his shoulders at that, saying, suit yourself, without saying it, looks up at the skies, is trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I could do a little bit little before it gets too dark. I wanted to get a halogen lamp, like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit any of my help, as was Shizune. It really makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that every pair of hands is needed. Excuse the pun, I guess. Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be of any help, though. It's just mixing some paints. You can do it, probably. Do you have motor control problems? Like, you know, those people who have some? Cerebral pro cere cerebral palsy? I'm sorry, that's a, hard for that's a hard word for me to say. Maybe? Not that I know of. I get it. The heart thingy is nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it then. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her bare right foot. I know Rin sounds like me, by the way, but she kind of acts like my character does. <laughs> like her mannerisms are very much like my character, so. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl like a syrup. I mix them, creating funny hypnotic looking swirls that melt quickly into each other to form a new monotone hue. Rin sets to work, every now and then asking me for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last millimetre before she is satisfi satisfied, but her, her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crouch, crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea you're the artist here. A hint of smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Oh my god, my left eye is twitching so bad. Do you lack an opinion? <laughs> no, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. Add more white. <laughs> with this exclamation I pour with this exclamation I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly whiter. That's not good. It has to be like like the colour when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life in your dream but can't remember it. Maybe it's yellow. Maybe you're colorblind. Despite the impossibility of mixing a color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense, that, nonsense that's being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Seeing a painting being born on the plastered wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints crouching down on the paving and just looking at her work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Rin doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire presence emits a completely different air as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of the other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even those short discussions soon evolve into a shorthand, both of us developing and using weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues as if there was some need to conserve words and breath and sound. Hmm. Interesting. 
We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. Sorry, there is a doggo outside. Yapping. Can you hear it? Oh, God. Oh, sorry if you can hear that, guys. <laughs> Just imagine there's a dog yapping at uh, Yamaku Academy. Did we go home? Well, we definitely went home. The sound of an alarm pulls me out of my fitful slumber and into the unpleasant state of wakefulness. I linger under their blanket for a few minutes, gathering energy to rise up while making excuses as for why I already haven't. Honestly, I wouldn't mind staying here for, for all day. For all day? <laughs> what is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> School is surprisingly exhausting after a long pause and the culture shock still has not faded, I think. Still, despite getting the impression that skipping class is easy here, I don't think they are going to let me get away with that easily. With it that easily. And the nurse is bound to keep breathing down my neck with the talk of exercising as well. So eventually I do rise up, swallow the morning medications, and put on my old soccer clothing. Football clothing. Thanks to my condition, I was exempted from taking part in gym classes at Yamaku. So I wouldn't get issued with a gym outfit. I'd order some to cover... I'd order some to cover such a contingency, but wearing my old football clothes is kind of nostalgic I can't use them for that anymore so maybe they they can get a new life this way a bit like me after all if I'm going to start taking care of myself I can't afford to slack around I'll start from the basics basics which include keeping the rest of my body in shape along with what little I can do to strengthen my heart maybe then I can go to I can go back to something approaching a normal life or at least something where I'm less likely to fall over, fall over dead at any minute I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one at the pres at present at the track. Let me get to see me, Emmy. Not just that, but it's the face I've seen before. The prosthetic legged girl who bowed, bowled over me, bowled me over in the hallway yesterday is running on the track lively, like a half mechanical gazelle. What was her name again? It was a short one, but I can't remember. It was Emmy. It was Emmy. She seems to be running laps at a somewhat easy lope, her prosthetic legs clacking rhythmically on the hard track surface. I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning. Maybe it's something akin to mine, and the nurse is oppressing the poor girl to jog just like he is oppressing me. I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't be here if it weren't for my health and his prompt, prompting me to do so. And even when things being like they are, it's only because I wanted to get it out of the way early. And the fact that I would be less likely to encounter someone who could witness my pitiful attempts to get in shape was merely a happy accident. <laughs> I'd leave, but it seems that my for, former assailant noticed me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. What's up, Emmy? Do you always wear underwear while you're running? Good morning. Your name's Hissar, right? She grins seemingly pleased that she remembered my name. I remembered your name, too. You may not rem remember me. Emmy, I knocked you over in the hall yesterday. Oh, I remember you. How could I forget such a, a blunt introduction? Emmy has a decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment before giggling. You almost killed me. <laughs> Literally, she almost killed me. Yeah, sorry about that. Again. Well, so long as you don't make habit of it, I, I suppose I'll be fine. Great. I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy consultant the nurse was talking about? Is that actually you? That's right. Oh. I was expecting someone from the nurse's staff, to be honest. What? Are you saying I don't look like a good... Like I could be a spy? No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid he would have someone to watch my every move. Unless you had to do exactly that. No, I'm here for my own reasons. The nurse asked, just asked me if I, if I had seen a messy-haired transfer student who looks like he's kind of lost around the track. So, why are you down here? And he strikes a dramatic pose. Training! For what? Track! <laughs> I see. You're on the track team then. Emmy nods enthusiastically. Yep! I'm one of the better runners too. I'm honest about it too. Hey! You should join up! It's good exercise, you know? I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. Nah, I'm not even sure that I really like running all that much. Plus, I'm just not into organized sports, you know? It's true, I never even really got in that 
and never even really got that much into football. <laughs> I mean, I'd run around with my friends and all, but that was really the only reason I ever played. It wasn't for the glory to be found on the field, that's for sure. Emmy seems to understand my meaning. I see, I see. I'm not that, I'm not that into the whole organization thing. <laughs> But now you're here, I guess we're going to run together, huh? Uh, what? Uh, sure, I guess. Emmy seems pleased. Are you going to warm up? That's fucking stupid. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. Rewind, don't warm up. No. Oh, no. You always should warm up. Bad, yes, Al. His Sal, sorry. Oh, God, she got close. Um, she scolds me enthusiastically, enthusiastically, but then smiles and leans close. Are you kidding me? He's never warmed up. You know, and he doesn't know why in the morning he wakes up and he feels like he's gone 10 rounds with Frank Bruno. I hate warming up too. I quite like it, actually, personally. She laughs suddenly. Heck, heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. Sorry, it's, it's, I'm finding it really hard to get that high. As if to com confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple of times, giving a passing impression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. Let's go! So we both take off around the track, and I immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. Emmy moves fru fluidly, fluidly throwing herself into the run with a sort of wild abandon. I find myself concentrating more on running properly. Hands spread, right? There's something about hitting on the balls of your feet rather than the heels. I try to match my stride to Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently, I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with help me with that sometime. I'm really not feeling up to more than a couple laps a day and slow to a walk pretty quick, pretty quick, quick, pretty quickly. What's wrong with me today? Emmy keeps running. It doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes me a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not in very good shape right now. Me too, brother. Emmy nods and then grins at me again. She seems to be doing a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you started, right? Next time, you just have to try to hold out longer, and then longer, and longer, and eventually you'll be great. I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm going to go get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Emmy shrugs un unconcernedly. I wish they'd stop putting like 10,000 syllables in words, because it's really hard for me to say. <laughs> nah, I've, nah, I've got plenty of time. I notice, she's, I notice that she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another careless shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Hissau. Uh, yeah, see ya. I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do slightly, I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. And like Amy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice at least to feel like I've taken some semblance of control over my own health. I'll have to try to keep this up. Yes, you will. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired from all the training, so I just want to unwind, but I don't want to break my slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. After taking a long shower anyway, I dry myself off and get out to the store to put on my clothes. Out of nowhere, a shadow... Oh, God, Kenji. A shadow appears within the mist, looming and radiating malicious intent. It bursts through the fog. The hell are you doing, Kenji? Sir? What are you doing here? What the hell are you... you scared me. What's the problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean, all over the place? I want to ask if he's been looking for me like that. Stark naked, but hold my tongue back. Does he also have, like, a leaf over his ding-dong as well? I finally realize I'm still naked too and quickly hold up my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up, but then why doesn't he wipe them off? And his vision so bad is his vision so bad that like he's perpetually seeing through fog? You know, your room and yeah, that's it. I mean, hey, I mean I still had to get up, yeah. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? What the fuck? He puts on an innocent face and looks looks away. Trying very hard to look very casual, it doesn't work. He's as tra transparent as a window pane side <laughs> as his window window pane size glasses. Hey, that's not very fair. Talking neutrally like this, wearing nothing feels awkward. 
Actually, somehow it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked, to say some nothing of the fact that he's naked as well. I tried to brush off the feeling of off with success. Tried to brush the feeling off with success. Money? Sure. What? Awesome! Wait, why do you need it? Eh... Uh, can't you just give it to me because I, I had the... Can't you just give it to me because I had I had the goodwill not to run through your pockets while you're in the shower? I could have, but I exercise restraint. And in the end, isn't it the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. What the fuck? You should just, you need a punch right now. Straighten your dick. This makes no sense. If it's a thought that counts, I should with, withhold payment. Since his thoughts were so clearly impure and his attentions are probably even more sinister since he can't tell me what they are, I say as, as much to him. I'm offended, man. But if that's your game, then fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order a pizza, and I already have most of the cost of the pizza. I need your I need your help for the rest. I get some I get some of that pizza too, right? No. Are you serious? Yeah. I would give you some, but you have class. You don't have time to eat pizza. What about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza and pay the guy, and then eat it. It's not easy, you have to obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you and the pizza, and they will ask for a slice. <laughs> it's a hard world out there, everyone wants a piece, then you're left pizzaless in an unforgiving world. <laughs> it's happened before, that's how I know. <laughs> Every day I plan my vengeance, that's when the people who wrong me order a pizza, I'll be there, ever vigilant. Kenji strikes a dramatic pose completely without irony. But yeah, only like 400 yen please. You're, you're my only help. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza. It's too far. I try not to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. Let me tell you what happened last time I went out without carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside. I can't remember what I was doing. Something standing, maybe wondering how I got there. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of lightning spitting through the sky, like how you spill a sandwich into two equal pieces to make it more manageable to hold and eat, a bird crapped on my head. It was the second most shocking moment of my life. What was the first? He ignores me as he keeps going. I want to grab him and shake him. Is he just trying to keep momentum? I'll go with that, even if it's more likely he just didn't hear me. I'm starting to like Kenji now. <laughs> so funny, but so weird. It was like in the openings of some kind of anime show. You, you know how there is always a part where the main dude is fighting his rival and they fly each other and crash the swords like there's, there's like big dramatic colored auras and zoom. It was like that, but with poo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I need some money, please. Don't leave me hanging, man. I only need like a thousand yen. Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah. Okay. What? I'll pay you back, I swear. You better. That's what it means. That's what it means to borrow stuff. Let me just say right now, if you lend people money, never expect it back. Never. Unless they are contracted to you. Right? Never expect expect it back. That's some burning ore wisdom for you today. Uh, I don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. And that's why. You have one week. Uh... Kenji Winters makes a noise like a dying cow, particularly disturbing in fact, given that his baton is conducting freely. You're not supposed to be so tight assed about money between brothers and arms, man. Men have it bad enough as it is. Did you know that male porn stars only make about half of what female porn stars make? That, just, that doesn't mean anything unless you're a porn star. So maybe I'm a porn star, on the side, struggling to make ends meet as I fight the feminist agenda. You can't even spot me, spot me, you. You can't even spot me or crumbs, you bastard. Nobody understands. Nobody. Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? Not necessarily. That isn't what feminism is all about. This feminist agenda stuff again. This stuff is important. I can t I can see that you don't give a shit, but this series here, feminists are a dangerous enemy. Make no mistake. You take them lightly, and you'll wake up in the morning with a knife in your back. Bam! Out of nowhere. How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? <laughs> Women are terrible at stabbing things, man. <laughs> you just said you don't like, don't take them lightly. Well, I mean, don't don't take them lightly for the big things. Individually, they're not a threat. But if there was some kind of war, like a big war with men on one side and the feminist forces on the other side, it'd be pretty ugly. 
And that day will come with the feminists coming out of their central top secret world, world wide feminist headquarters and say, It's on now, motherfuckers! <laughs> You're being ridiculous. There's no big worldwide feminist headquarters building. Where would they even hide that? I mean, it'd have to be massive. You couldn't hide that on the earth. Someone would notice a big fortress with women only in it. Who said it was on earth? <laughs> oh my god. I turn away from Kenji and start practicing frowning faces in frowning faces in a mirror so that I can figure out what kind of frown would best express my emotions. He can't see me from this distance anyway. Which unfortunately means that he just keeps on ranting without any regard to sense or sensibility. Yeah, there's a war going on, a war not many know about, but it's a great one that will boil over one day and encompass all of the known world. Then we'll have to pick sides, we'll have to make a stand, in fact it's happening right now. Imagine it, the bloody battlefield, a vicious conflict without end. I almost gave up when I thought this cause was silly. <laughs> when I grew tired of the bleakness of our fight. When I mistook the time, the power went out for the feminist raid and thought the end was near. But then I realized that if I give up, it would all be over. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I knew I had to get serious because I'm the, I'm the last sane man in this insane world. It's about duty. That'd be a pretty crappy movement if all the hinges on one naked guy ranting in a bathroom and another naked guy. So can I have the money? <laughs> He's blocking the way out. He's getting cold because I'm still naked. It's getting cold because I'm still naked and I want to go to class, so I agreed to spot him the money. Awesome, thanks, dude. We should go bowling later on. Bowling? Yeah, it's an ultimate sport. There are almost no women bowlers either, making it all also the manliest sport. Should I wear my pink bowling shirt with matching shoes or the pastel green with flower accents? There are bowling clothes? Maybe. Anyway, you had better pay me back. I can pay you back in stuff, right? I don't have the time to ask him to elaborate what that means. I don't know. I have to get to Clash. You're kind of in the way. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to hold you up, man. I, I, I have stuff to do myself. The time has come. The time for what? I just like saying that. <laughs> okay, now the time has really come. For what? I have to use the bathroom. Get out of it. <laughs> I was just going to. What does that mean? It's a big bathroom. So? I have to be alone or I can't go. The pressure. Okay, what if someone else comes in? Uh, I'll think of something. I give him my practice frown and looks kind of silly reflected, reflected in his glasses. He even doesn't notice or doesn't see. Anyway, so I get I get dressed and run back to my room. Feeling as though an eternity has passed since I woke up. Oh my goodness. That is time I will never get back. I'll get in for this somehow. But right now I have to get to class. And the first person is in class today, although I think I'm a little too early. Then again, sitting alone here for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with, with Kenji. The combination of fatigue, frustration, and boredom starts making me feel very tired. I black out for a second, waking up when my head hits the surface of my desk. Rubbing my forehead, I realize this is as good as a reason as any to stay up for now and stop coming to class so early later. Eventually, I hear a tapping noise outside in the hallway, and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She's not in this class, so she must have some other business. Maybe she's, lo she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looks, looking hesitant as, she, as if she was a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so before she looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in on her own accord, though, after straining her skirt and shirt collar, as if it was of importance to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She calls into the quiet classroom with a probing, delicate voice. I realize the silence might unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Good morning, Lily. Hisao, good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to her before. It's, it's likely. If I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today by any, by any chance? No, she seemed to come in only just before the bells ring, or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in the school right now. I didn't hear anyone else on my way here. I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself for doing something that other people should. Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyway. It's a very busy morning today. The festival is coming up soon, and today is the deadline for, the, for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that is why it's so quiet today.
Oh, God. Fucking Misha. Misha pops into the room and Shizune as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. Hey, he chan Hi. Look, it's class representative. Hello. It's the class representative. Hello. Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha's or Shizune's use of the word look. Good morning. Of course, you're not the representative of this class, right, right? I am not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answers to Shizune than she was with me the other day. I guess they really don't get along at all. Then I realise that Lily might actually not know Shizune is present. She's trying to detect whether or not she is, to know who she is talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that and Shizune are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizune being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decided to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, Shizune. You were here even earlier than us. Misha puffs out her, ch her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on Shizune's behalf too? It's not that weird though that Shizune didn't like my little comment. It's true, I was here earlier than them, so me saying something like that could definitely be misinterpreted as anything. Especially to Shizune, he doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gauge content. Intent, sorry. Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, Shizune, Shizune has already moved on. Cast rep, it's a good thing you're here. We have to talk. The festival is coming up in three days, right? Every other class has already handed in their projected budget reports for their events, even the first years, except you. <laughs> There is still time to hand it in, isn't there? Today! D the deadline is today! You're certainly taking your time, aren't you? If I had if I had it my way, I'd have all the necessary paperwork t days ago, but someone had to say, The deadline! Please extend it! Yes, that was me. Planning something on this scale is not a small task, and a week is too small a time frame to expect the whole class to work out such a complex issue completely. Do you want to know what's harder than distributing the funds for one class event? Handing the same matter for every class in the school and then some. The one who does that is me. He should puts her hands on her hips and stands up straight. While well, she's really getting into the role, it doesn't look like she's very amused though. But before we go any further in this little, it seems like we're going to get into an argument here. We're going to stop it here, right? Because we just ran out of time. Wow. Okay. So the Kenji scene was gold. <laughs> I love that. And this looks like it's getting into something pretty, pretty cool. Um, it was nice uh, connecting with Rin a bit as well. But anyway, guys, um, this has been episode six. Um, if you have a negative or a positive comment to make, please let me know and I'll see what I can do to, you know, just make the videos better. Uh, like and comment and share the video if you want to see more. Give me recommendations if you have any of other visual novels that I can work on uh, that you want to see me do. And... Uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, guys, for episode 7. Owl is out.